menopause, embarrassment, work. My name's Tracy Montgomery. I talk about all things menopause, midlife and all the that comes with it. So today we're going to talk about working menopause and some of those symptoms that can be slightly embarrassing or very embarrassing. So the majority of women are going to go through menopause when they are still working because as we've already discussed the average age for menopause is 52. That's still within the working age but perimenopause that's the bit where those hormones do their little shit show start packing up their bags ready to bugger off and that's when we can start having this real flux in our hormone levels and it can cause all these awful symptoms so we're going to talk about five embarrassing symptoms that we can experience when we're working and why they can make the working environment difficult for women as we transition through into menopause. So the first one we're going to talk about is hot flashes or hot flushes, depending on where you are as to how you pronounce, talk, call them. So this is when you can find yourself getting, as they say, really hot. You can flush. So your whole skin can go red and you can sweat profusely so much so that it is dripping down you. It can drip, especially under the boobs, down your back. And that's not really conducive to many work environments. So if you're presenting, if you're in a managerial role and you suddenly find yourself flushing, getting hot, those sweats starting, it can be really embarrassing. And this is something that your employer needs to be able to understand. Going on with that, we can have those mood swings. So why are these happening? Why are the mood swings happening? Our hormones are no longer, our female hormones are no longer needed in the capacity they were. The whole point of us being here is to procreate and create more little us. And we come to an age where that's no longer viable. So the hormones that nurture, that have nurtured our offspring, that nurture us, are now leaving. And the fact that our brain has had these hormones for so long, and they're now doing one, means that our brain can't cope. It leaves us feeling anxious. It leaves us feeling quite isolated. And it can really affect our confidence. So we can go from being happy jolly to crying that's quite a typical one over the least important things or what others think of important or they might not even be important you could be watching a chocolate advert on tv you could just walk through a door go to pick up your cup of tea and it's not quite the right color to how you normally have your cup of tea there seems to be no sense making sense of it though is understanding what is happening. If you understand what's happening, then it starts to make a little bit more sense. But also these mood swings, because the hormone levels are changing, can affect us and how we think in other ways. That brain fog. So that brain fog can be quite annoying when you're working, especially when you have to remember things. Now, it's normally names that you forget. So things like talking to somebody that you know and you know that you know this person you've known this person for quite a long time but there are occasions when you can't remember who on earth they are you can't remember where you know them from where you've seen them before what capacity you've known them in before but you know you know them you may have had this so there are ways of getting around this if you're in meetings write down everyone's names if you're a teacher and you're delivering, make sure you write down all your students' names. Put them in a seating plan so that you know where they sat, so you know who is who. 
all these little things can help with that brain fog and inevitably a day or so an hour or so or maybe a week or so later you'll go oh that was and it will all come back to you knowing is part of the problem knowing what the issue is knowing what's causing it can help more sleep disturbances so at this time because we've possibly got the hot flashes the mood swings we're going to get sleep disturbances those hormones just cause havoc everywhere so we need to know that we're going to be a little bit more tired that can lead to things like fatigue although they're not necessarily connected you can be fatigued and still be having a good night's sleep so they're not necessarily connected as the same symptoms and some women can have disturbed sleep and still manage to cope. Other women can be fatigued and not have the sleep disturbances. So it's all relevant to you and you need to monitor and track your own symptoms. Now, one that is quite embarrassing is the incontinence. Now, this can happen after childbirth, but it can also happen during the menopause transition. There are some simple strategies for this, aren't there? There are plenty of products out there that you can take for this that mean that you're not going to get that embarrassed. And some of them look like normal underwear. So if you get it once, be prepared. It might happen again, but make sure that you're not giving into it. Make sure you're keeping as fit as you can so that those muscles can keep doing the job that they have been doing for the past 40, 50, however many years. So bear in mind, you're female. You're going to go through this menopause transition. At some point, it's going to happen. Your journey is unique. There are plenty of people out there that have been through it already or in the middle of it or about to go through it. You need to be able to talk about this to your employer and you need to be able to talk about this to people that you feel comfortable with. So you can come and join me in my community. And if you feel that you cannot talk to your employer, I can advocate for you and I've got things that I can offer your employer as well. So come and join us in menopause, midlife and all the, and I will speak to you soon about our next, how to cope with menopause and work. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.